I think we're feeling okay. The nerves are setting in. My legs are feeling fine at least. Um, how are your legs? It's like shaking a little bit, yeah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember waking up being very dazed and unsure about what had happened. Um, no memory really about what was going on, who I was or anything like that, so I was quite confused. They said they were taking off to Bastion Hospital just to check him over, take him to our knee, put him on a machine and for us to go over just as soon as we were ready. I was taken into a &E by the paramedics. They were moving me to a waiting chair just to be seen to and that movement caused me to go into cardiac arrest. Then they did say, it's really serious. We've had to take him into resource. And at that point, I think, yeah, everything drains out of you because that's something you only see on the telly. It doesn't happen to a fit, young, athletic boy that you've seen grow up and knows he's on top of his game. Just doesn't happen at all. The plan is to spend the next two weeks running to London. Whether we make it or not is another story entirely. I'm not confident. I don't think either of us are. But you don't know what you're capable of until you try it. We made it to Cardiff. I'm going to say that's about 40 miles. Tomorrow will be Cardiff to Newport. Another 12 miles or so. 12 days left. <laughs> We're here with Miss Wales, Emma Jenkins. She's offered to come and keep us company for part of the stage at least. I don't know if you can see, but across the road, looks like a really nice pub. At least that, that's what we thought. Turns out it's being turned into a house. We've got this much water left. It's, it's not a pub. At uh, Busdon Hospital, one of the nurses came around with um, a bit of information about charities that could support um, young people that have gone through cardiac arrest and the trauma. Uh, one of those was Cardiac Risk in the Young. They do a screening program to try and identify these conditions early on and they offer services to families that have gone through um, a bereavement and a group that I'm involved in, the My Heart Group, offering support to people like myself which have gone through it but coming out the other side want to know a little bit more about the condition and talk to doctors and talk to other people that have gone through it to help them get back to normal life. The main reason for attempting this is to raise money for CRY. When you have a 23 year old friend who has a cardiac arrest out of absolutely nowhere, it really makes you think about what's important. He's so lucky to be alive. You know there are cases out there where it doesn't end the same way, where the person does die and that's it. That's the end of their life. We are in a lovely town of Keep calm and carry on. We're here in Wilshire. We've just reached the White Horse on the side of the road. It means we're about halfway. It's another seven days to the marathon. We'll just keep going. We'll see you in a bit anyway. What's your one bit of advice for us? Most important piece of advice you could give us for going on this crazy challenge? You break it right down. So if you're going through a hellish session that you just are hating every second of it and the weather's horrible and your body's aching, you just think you break it right down. It's like whatever it is, it's 10 minutes left or half an hour, even if it's an hour left or two hours left, that's all you need to do. You just need to get through it. Just get through that one thing. Because guaranteed, really, really bad sessions, when you finally do make it through, they're the ones you remember afterwards. They're the ones you feel very pleased with yourself. And when you finally do achieve something amazing, you go back and you go, that's because of days like that, when I actually did it, when most people would have stopped, and I did it. Uh, fuel yourself well, recover well. Um, use compression socks and compression bottoms when you're um, recovering after a day's running, and that'll help. Um, but yeah, just keep, keep on running. <laughs>
keep your sense of humour. Yeah. Definitely. You've got to be able to laugh. You've got to laugh at yourselves, laugh at the situation, laugh at things around you and you'll be fine. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Pleasure. <laughs> oh Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes van? My, My friends all drive Porsches. I must make amends. I've worked all my lifetime. No help from my friends. Oh Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? We'll finish. Well, oh, I don't know we will. I was on the train this morning. You might not. <laughs> I was on the train this morning and I kind of just thought, I might die. Today, I, I've said messages to people before they die. <laughs> Um, okay, um, but in, in an emergency, I will urinate in your mouth if you're dehydrated, okay? We've got water. Oh, okay. Okay. So thanks. There you go. I was being sick last night. I was being sick again this morning. So we're walking today. It's a shame, but what can you do? So here we are, um, outside the home of Rubbish Rugby. Um, this is the home of a team that haven't done anything significant since 2003. Uh, a team that may have, may have beaten Wales in the Six Nations this year. So do you know where we're going from here? London, that way. Better today, much better. Ten or so miles left to Big Ben. The weather's gorgeous, life is good. And that's it, we've made it to London. 215 miles covered across two countries. We've travelled through 10 counties. God knows how many blisters we've got between us. All that's left is a teeny tiny little marathon tomorrow. Marathon Sunday, we made it here. Our only real kind of time constraints we have now is that we have to finish in under eight hours to get the medal. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to do that. Yeah. We'll see what happens. We're in front of everybody else, apart from these guys. Um, so, let's go running. Test my heart, because you've done it.